Um, here are some other adjectives that define quality or limits, I should say. Uh, we, we got the word demasiado, too much, too much of something, demasiado, that would go in front of the noun. Um, also, we've mentioned pocas, but by itself, poco. Um, so poco, poca, pocos, pocas, all of those are going to go in front. Now, the word alguno, some, when you're using alguno as some, that's a good example of one that would go in front. Also, the word ninguno, no or none. All right. Another one is bastante. Another way to say enough. And we also have the word varios, which means enough or sufficient. Also, we have... These are very important, okay? This bastante, varios, varias veces, varios veces, uh, algún, ningún, okay? This mm -hmm. just uh, make a smaller, uh, I mean... Though it is there in your LMS, um, you can watch it also once again. So just mm -hmm. to make a, a note yes, that sir. when you really watch, okay? Okay. Uh, cuanto, which means as much. And let's do one more. Mucho, a lot or many, muchos. And those would go in front of the noun as well. All right. So those words defining quantity or limits are going to typically... That if they describe in their adjectives, they're going to typically go in front of the noun as well. Okay. Now, also, I want to talk about two words that don't necessarily define quantity or limits, but they do kind of go together and they describe uh, in that superlative way. And that is best and worst. Okay. Best is mejor and worst is peor. Those would go in front of the noun as well. Best and worst. All right. Now, Let's move on to another set of words. We have some descriptive adjectives that we would put in front of the noun as well. Now, these words are really words when you want to use an, an adjective that really emphasizes a quality of or characteristic of someone or something, then you can put it in front of the noun as well. Now, here's an example. If I said, este dulce chocolate es delicioso this sweet chocolate is delicious and you really you know we're putting it up there because we really want to emphasize the characteristic of that chocolate this sweet chocolate so if you're this is the character when you are saying about the character of the this thing then you can put uh, the adjective uh, before okay the noun like uh, this uh, sweet chocolate this uh, poisonous snake, huh? Like that. Okay. Okay, ma'am. If you're really emphasizing that, that characteristic or a particular characteristic of it, you can put it in front of the noun. Here's one. Uh, the brave lion attacked his enemies. You can, you know, you're emphasizing brave. So you could say, el valiente león atacó a sus enemigos. That would be an example. So that valiente is going in front of Leon. We're emphasizing that characteristic of the lion. That's a good example. All right. Now I'm going to give you two that are kind of by themselves. And they these can actually go before or after. Okay. So that's why I'm putting them together because they can go before or after. And it depends. You know, you're going to hear it both ways. You can use it either way. And that is the word bueno and the word malo. Good and bad. I'm going to show you two examples here on the screen. So, un día bueno, a day good, or un buen día. Now, notice with bueno and malo, when I put it up front, I'm taking off that O. So, I'll just say buen or mal. Okay, so un día bueno or un buen día. It can work either way. You're going to get basically the same meaning out of those, okay? Now, I want to give you one final category of words. These words can go either in front of or after the noun. And the reason I'm giving you these together is because when you use it in the front, it has one meaning. And when you use it after the noun, it has another meaning. 
So it kind of changes meaning depending on where you use it. All right, now I'm going to give you a list. So this is really where you might you may want to rewind, you know, back this video up a few times and watch it if you're taking notes right now. See, tomas apuntes, okay? Now, first one I want to give you is the word pobre. Pobre. Now, before the noun, it pobre really implies poor. that unfortunate, I say that poor man, um, pobre hombre, it really implies unfortunate. You know, oh, that poor man. It's kind of like English. Um, when we say it like that, it's like, oh my gosh, that poor guy, it, it, very unfortunate. But when we put it at the end, after the noun, it really just implies poor in terms of money. Okay, so that's kind of what this whole list is about. All right, now, the next one is viejo, viejo. Now, this one, before the noun, kind of means former, former somebody, all right? But when you put it after, it means old age, all right? The, they're old aged, like really old in terms of how old they are. Okay, now then you've got the word nuevo, new. All right, before, it kind of means another. So nuevo coche kind of means like I got another car. Like it's a newer, newer one for me. But after the noun, it's going to be it's new, as in it's newly made, newly acquired. Okay. Now the next one is varios, varios. Uh, before the noun, this kind of means several, various in in the several way. But at after the noun, it kind of implies different. Okay. All right, the next one is mismo. Before the noun, it implies same. La misma clase, the same class. After the noun, it's really used as himself or herself. Su mismo, him, himself. Okay, next one is único. Único. Before the noun, it means only. After, it kind of implies unique. In that sort of way. You can see it looks like unique. All right, now, grande. We were talking about this one a minute ago, saying gran or buen or mal. Grande makes sort of the same, it kind of works the same as bueno and malo. Okay, because before the noun, we're going to usually say gran, just say G-R-A-N. But that implies great. You know, this great, you know, it's emphasizing how great they are, the, the person. But after, it implies physically big. Something's muy grande. La casa es muy grande. The house is very big. All right, now, let's move into the next one. It's triste. Triste. Before the noun really implies dreadful. But after, it means sad. Okay? Now, this is one that uh, people have asked me about a lot. Antiguo. They ask me, how do I know when to say viejo or antiguo or anciano? There are several ways to say old in Spanish. All right, so antiguo before the noun means um, old or former or ancient. But now after the noun, it really implies antique. Okay, so you can see in all of these, they're similar but use slightly different contexts, okay? So the next one is distinto distinto. Before the noun, it implies various. After the noun, it implies just different. Okay. Now, the word solo, very popular word in Spanish, solo. Before the noun, it implies the one, the only of something. Okay. After it, it implies lonely. Okay. Now, the word diferente. Before the noun, it implies various. Diferentes casas, if you wanted to say, various. After the noun, it implies just simply different. Okay. Now, the word simple, simple means before the noun, mere, M-E-R-E. -E. But after, it implies simple or modest. Now we move to the word cualquier. Before the noun, it really implies any, when you're talking about, it's kind of like you've got these available and it's any, any of those available in that context. But after the noun, 
It's just kind of like any, doesn't matter. It's just any, okay? I <laughs> hope that makes sense. All right, this is fun, isn't it? Okay, next one is raro, raro. Before the noun, it means rare, and after the noun, it implies strange, okay? Next up is a word you've heard before is alto, alto. We've always said, hey, that means tall, right? Yes. Before the noun, though, it implies like top or high quality. But after the noun, it implies tall, okay? Now we have the word cierto. I've heard this word a whole lot in Spanish. Cierto before the noun implies certain. But after the noun, it means true or it can mean, of course. Somebody says cierto. Of course. All right. Just a couple of more. Next one is puro. Puro, P-U-R-O. Before the noun, it really implies nothing but. Okay. But after the noun, it implies pure. All right. And then one more, and that is bajo. We talked about alto a while ago. Here is bajo. It's opposite. You go, I know that means short, right? It does when it's after, but before the noun, alto meant high quality. This is like low quality. Fio, fia, bonito, bonita, lindo, linda, hermosa, hermosa. Same beautiful. Okay, just write it. Los adjetivos. Uh, here uh, you, uh, you have written that. Uh, Los adjectivos, that means... Adjectivos. Adjectivos. The adjectives. The adjectives. Oh, the adjectives. It means yeah. that all these adjectives are uh, masculine. Masculino or... Sing uh, yeah, the word adjective is masculino. Okay. Mm. El adjetivo or los adjetivos. The adjectives. Okay. It is masculine. But others you can see now, I'm just putting slash feo fea. Okay. Mm -hmm. It means feo fea, bonito, bonita. According to the gender, you have to change. Vale? Yes, claro? Yes, sí. Vale, continue. I'm uh, Lindo and uh, Linda. What is uh, the meaning of Same, that? Beautiful, beautiful, but extremely beautiful. Okay. When you are like uh, quantifying an ob object like awesome, wow, extremely beautiful, then you can say Lindo, Linda. And mostly we are uh, putting it uh, for objects, I mean for places. This lugar, este lugar, uh, this place, muy linda. Okay, ma'am. 